You obviously know Kung Fu. Joining me today on the Kung Fu Driving Podcast, celebrating the Republic Pictures release of Art of Eight Limbs from Tiger Style Media, actor, screenwriter, director, international star of stage and screen, beloved by many for his role as Friedrich von Trapp from The Sound of Music, revered by many more as the OG live-action Spider-Man, Nicholas Hammond. Nicholas, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me. Thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's great to have you. Um, I feel that uh, Friedrich uh, von Trapp and Peter Parker are on opposite ends of the spectrum here, but uh, maybe in the multiverse, Friedrich's uh, life story would have made a good origin story for a supervillain. What do you think? I don't think they're that far apart, to be honest with you, because I think Peter was just a guy who was trying hard to do his best and, you know, made mistakes along the way. And I, I think Friedrich might have been kind of the same. He was just a kid who wanted his father to admire him and, and you know, and, and to grow up and be like his dad. And, and then he learned some values from his new stepmother. And I, I'd like to think that maybe, you know, if you met if you met Friedrich, you know, Six or seven years later, it could have easily been somebody very similar to Peter. I'm, <laughs> I, I like them both enormously. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you uh, still get? Uh, I mean, obviously, you still get love from from uh, the fans, but do you get more love from the Sound of Music fans or from the Spidey fans nowadays? It, it's pretty much an even thing. I've done a few comic cons, and you know, there'll be a line in front of all the uh, the Sound of Music photos for me to sign and then there's an equal size line in front of all the spider-man peter parker photos for me to sign and now there's a line in front of the once upon a time in hollywood photos but yeah. but i would say to be honest with you i would say i mean the, the the sound of music fans you know are very hardcore all over the world and uh and in fact i'm going to salzburg in two weeks just because i've got another event there but um but the, but the spider-man fans are still pretty pretty great I love the fact that they even remember that series and that it hasn't been completely uh, forgotten because of all the amazing Marvel films. Um, but, you know, look, I was proud of the fact that we created that character and um, and nobody knew it would turn into this billion dollar, multi-billion dollar franchise. But we did the best we could with the resources we had. And and, and I love doing it. And, I'm, and again, it's a bit like doing this movie now, you know, I never thought I'd get a chance to play a superhero. And so I jumped at the chance to play Peter Parker. And I never thought I'd be in a martial arts movie. So when Shannon yeah. McIntosh, the producer, asked me to do it, you know, I thought, yeah, of course I'll do it. <laughs> when else will I never get a chance to do this? Now, that's awesome. Uh, well, you know, uh, regarding Spider-Man, uh, Superman made us believe that a man could fly, but you made us believe that it was cooler to crawl. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, uh, about the uh, Art of Eight Limbs, um, First of all, Art of Eight Limbs as a title is a little too on the nose for the OG Spider-Man. So <laughs> that's kind of funny. Um, but uh, when we were making it. But <laughs> you know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but of course, well, I tell me about you... the film and tell me about your role in the film. OK, well, just back to the title. Um, what I learned and not I mean, maybe martial arts people know this, but Muay Thai, which is the form of martial arts in the movie, um, you don't just use your hands and your feet. You also use your knees and your elbows. So it's as though you have eight limbs when you're fighting. That's where the title comes from. Um, my function in the film really is to drive what is the plot, you know, the reason this is all happening. I mean, I'm not there to have anything to do with the action, anything to do with the fights, any of that stuff. Uh, uh, all I'm there to do is to keep reminding people, this is why this guy has been sent here. This is a real thing, you know, in this world that, um, it, you know, it's a what if. I mean, it is true that um, Assad killed his own people with poison gas. So the what if that starts the movie is, what if some of those canisters of gas had been stolen and gotten to the hands of bad actors? And that's a totally believable premise. So... You know, I was kind of like there to drive the story and to be the touchstone for Ludi Lin, who is the guy in the field, but he doesn't really know why he's there or what he's supposed to do except go to fight. And um, and so as a, a friend of his father's, as an old experienced CIA operative myself, and now the station chief in Bangkok, 
you know, it's my job to, I'm sort of running this agent in the field. And so I think every time you check back in with Nick, my character, it's kind of like, oh yeah, this isn't just one fight after another. There actually is a story here and it's a completely believable story. It's a, it's a story that is based on a premise that is absolutely, you know, plausible. So I, I, I so for all those reasons, when I was asked to do it, I thought, yeah, that's a that's a very interesting character. I'd like to do that. Plus, I get to be around all these cool fighters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, uh, uh, I guess not not being a martial artist yourself, uh, what was it like uh, having uh, all of that uh, dynamic and impactful martial arts going on around you? It was amazing. It was totally amazing. I mean, it's kind of like you're shooting two movies at the same time because, you know, you're shooting you're shooting the movie that involves the plot of the movie, but then also that you've got all these fighters there and they're these extraordinary athletes. I mean, they are as tough as nails, these guys, even little tiny ones, you know, but by God, are they tough. And just to watch them all day long, working out, practicing, you know, fighting, learning their routines. It's like you've walked into like this really super elite gym and you're surrounded by these guys and you think, whoa, these guys are in the same movie I'm in. And uh, so I, I used to hang around and watch the fights because for me, it was like so cool, you know, sure. and, and and I thought I will probably never get a chance again in my life to be in a movie where, that has all these incredibly gifted fighters. And speaking of which, uh, Jeff, it there is no CGI in this movie. I mean, every fight is a real fight. Those guys are real fighters, every single one of them. And um, and and to me, that level of authenticity, you know, I loved. And and I thought, yeah, we're not making a cartoon here. You know, we're not doing something that is totally computer reliant. We're making a movie with real people, flesh and blood, and these are real fights. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, and I mean, even even. Um, even the girl, you know, who, uh, who, you know, is terrific in the movie, but she actually is a, a champion Muay Thai fighter herself, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I, 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 I loved it. I felt I'm surrounded by an energy I'm not used to being surrounded by. And, and that was very, you know, that was very kind of, it gave you a buzz. Yeah, yeah, I think that aspect of it, uh, the fact that they don't use a lot of stunt people for this because you, uh, everybody involved with it uh, really knows uh, their martial arts so they can do all of this stuff right on screen. I think uh, it, it helps uh, make that more realistic and more grounded, particularly with the story that you guys are trying to tell, you know, uh, uh, real life situations. But now you're you're uh, coupling it with real life martial arts, doing everything, you know, That's hand right. to hand and making it look as grounded as possible. Right. And I'm hoping and I think I'm right that I think there'll be a um, a, a, a desire on the part of the audience for, for getting back to stuff that is real. You know, yes, the Marvel Universe is fantastic of what it does, you know, spectacular, but we all know it's not real, you know? Yep. And I think I think probably younger audiences that have not had an, audi uh, an opportunity to see this kind of thing where it really is real, uh, I think they'll respond to it. I think they really will. And I know one of the films uh, of, the, of the four, you know, is mainly female fighters. And I think that will be interesting, particularly for young women to see. So I think I think there's a, you know, just the same way people respond to the Olympics and the way they re respond to those extraordinary athletes, because, you know, there's no there's no bullshit. I mean, they're really doing it. You know, those swimmers are doing it. Those runners are doing it. Those bicyclists are doing it. And, and I think part of the attraction of the Olympics is it's not a movie. You know, it's not a movie full of effects. It's the real thing. And um, so, and, you know, as I say, somebody like Grace, you know, who plays the female lead, it's her very first movie she'd ever been in. But I think her skill and her confidence she had in herself as, as a fighter is what made her not blink when it came to, you know, doing one-on-one -on -one scenes with me or doing, you know, complicated scenes with other people. You know, she just flew through it because to her, it was like another form of, instead of meeting someone in the ring you're just meeting them in front of a camera but she has all that she has that amazing self-confidence that she's gained from being you know a really really fine Muay Thai fighter in fact I remember I had dinner with her one night and uh the car dropped me off at my hotel and and, and she got out of the car and I said but don't you live like a mile away and she said yeah and it's now like you know 10 o'clock at night in downtown Bangkok 
And I said, well, I'll walk you to your apartment. And she said, Nicholas, if I got into trouble, I think I'm better than you are. <laughs> yeah. That's probably. awesome. Yeah, I know. Now, uh, when uh, you're you're sitting there and you know admiring all this stuff going on, did you ever get the itch to, you know, have them throw you in there and then just throw down a little bit, just even just a little bit? I really didn't. I mean, I did think it might have been quite fun to have. Yeah, I mean, like in the death scene that I did, I thought, oh, can't he fight back a little bit? You know, can't he like get into it a little bit with this guy? But then, of course, as you see in the movie, actually, even though he's an elderly doctor, you know, he's still a damn good fighter you know when he when he when he takes her on and so and i just thought no it's it's ridiculous and um in fact it's funny because i saw in the credits it says nicholas hammond stunt double and i thought what stunt double? <laughs> <laughs> i had no stunts i guess they had one on standby in case i did do something but i never did but yeah no look at this stage of my life i was very happy to sit and admire and watch the guys <laughs> do it yeah um were you ever a fan of the uh the kung fu films of the 70s and the 80s because that's i mean that was a big deal for us uh my audience uh, in particular uh because those were our heroes growing up what, what was were you ever uh, exposed to that well, stuff well weirdly enough i i was I, I i enjoyed jean-claude van damme quite a lot nice. and i also and i also like bruce lee so, you know, uh, and some of the Chinese movies, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what is it? Crouching Dragon? Crouching something. Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you see, I love that movie. I just love that. I think that was Gong Li, who was the actress in it. And I, I know it, it kind of slightly goes into fantasy where they start flying through the air and ways that. Yeah. But to me, it was like watching an incredible dance, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I love and I loved I loved Kill Bill. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought what what Quentin did with that movie, you know, was fascinating. And the way he took the um, the martial arts theme and applied it to a Hollywood movie, but with total respect for all the Asian cultures of all the different uh, dance um, fight forms from those different right. cultures, particularly Japan, I suppose, in that one. And so, yeah, I, I and when I did. Once upon a time in Hollywood, I said to Quentin, you know, that was fascinating the way you managed to do that and work it in. But, you know, he's a genius and he can pretty much do anything as far as the Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, that being said, um, was uh, was your work on uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, what got you involved with with this production? Yeah. Uh, your connections yeah, there? No yeah, because Shannon McIntosh was the producer of that. And she and I really hit it off while we were making uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And and she, you know, liked what I did in the film. And and she said to me the last day, you know, well, we're, we're, we're definitely going to work together again. And I mean, a lot of people say that and then you don't hear from <laughs> them. Again. Uh, but we, in Shannon's case, you know, as soon as she had this movie uh, up and ready to go. And of course it was delayed by COVID, but then when it was ready to shoot uh, and there were still very strict COVID rules. I mean, I had to fly to Thailand with a, wearing a mask the whole way. Sure, yeah. As everybody on the plane did, you know, those bad old days that we all went through. But as soon as she was able to get the camera rolling, you know, and when she called me and asked me to do it and she explained the story to me and I thought, look, I trust Chairman McIntosh completely. And she said, "Come on, we'll have fun. We'll be in Thailand. We're gonna go, we're gonna go to the River Kwai, you know, and all that kind of cool stuff." And so it didn't take much to persuade me. Yeah. Uh, what do you think uh, about uh, what uh, Tiger Sami is trying to do uh, with this whole endeavor to bring uh, uh, the whole new evolution and a new era of martial arts cinema uh, back? Uh, do you think uh, that the audiences uh, now are primed for something like this to come on? Yeah, I mean, I think this is what I was getting at before when I said, I think we've had, you know, we've had a huge amount of kind of uh, Marvel Universe movies. Um, and as great as they are, we might we might be overdosing on them a little bit. And so to get back to this kind of martial arts movie where, I mean, where it's based on a real premise, you know, uh, where you've got a real story of where we're not going, oh, come on, that can't possibly happen. You know, that I don't believe that. But if they're all based on things that you think, yeah, yeah, that, that could be, you know, that, that actually could happen. But combining that with the fact that you need martial arts skills 
in order to, you know, save the day. Um, I, I think I think it'll work. I think it'll work. I think it, I think it's getting back to something that people, you know, uh, I, I think they'll yearn for it. And when they see it, they'll suddenly think, oh, my God, where's where's this been all these years? You know, I'm talking about younger people who don't remember those early Kung Fu movies. But I think um, I, I, I would like to believe, I certainly hope that it it just opens the door to a particularly a younger audience that thinks, oh, this yeah. is really, you know, that those guys are really fighting out there, you know. <laughs> yeah. All so right. I Tell think- me then uh, what is on the horizon for Nicholas Hammond? What other things are you up to? What can we uh, look forward to from you? Yeah, well, I've been doing a, a, an American series uh, called uh, Good Cop, Bad Cop. And I think that goes to where on, I think on Paramount next year. And I'm leaving next week. I'm, I, I've done three films, four films, in fact, for a, a very, very wonderful director in Australia named Bruce Beresford, and who did Tender Mercies, and he did Driving Miss Daisy, and, you know, uh, really good films. And and I'm going, I start in a week to, uh, out, uh, to do, I'm out in Western Australia, to do a movie for him out there. And uh, I'm doing that, and then I go to Salzburg, and I'm shooting something uh, to commemorate the 60th anniversary of The Sound of Music, which is next wow. year. So I've got those two things, and then I'm doing a play. I've done two plays this last year, and uh, that took up most of my time. And then I'll do a play at the beginning of next year. So I've got a few things on, on uh, lined up ahead of me, which I'm That's grateful amazing. Yeah, I'm really grateful, because I've been doing this, Jeff, for over 60 years now. And I'm doing it really- well, sir. I feel really grateful that people still, you know, that the phone still rings. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Art of Eight Limbs is in select theaters August 16th, 2024. Uh, available to buy on digital August 20th, 2024. Uh, and then I believe there's a, a group uh, digital buy available uh, sometime in September. Um, but Nicholas Hammond, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, best of yeah, luck with everything you have pleasure. going on. And, and uh, I hope a lot of people. I hope a lot of people watch it in a movie theater. I think there's nothing better absolutely. than seeing a movie like this in a theater. Absolutely, and getting that action right up in your face, right? Right. And the whole audience cheering, and you know, it's cool. <laughs> awesome. So, and I, I can't, I uh, can't, of course, uh, leave without saying so long, farewell, a feeder saying, and goodbye, and thank you so much. My pleasure to you, and you, and you. <laughs> Have a great day, Nicholas. Thank you. You too, Jeff. Poison Clan rocks the world.